was playing basketball, Roosevelt Middle School. And I was playing, we were playing against a college team. So we, we already won the game, but one of the kids decided to come underneath me. And when he did, I severely sprained my ankle. And with that, which we didn't know at the time, there was a blood clot that formed. I remember saying, Lord, I just want to experience you. And I remember putting my hands up, my arms out. And I was experiencing, and then I started stomping around. That blood clot broke off in the church. And I remember picking up my leg and putting it in the car. So I went home because I'm so competitive. And I said, there's no way this happened to me. I'm an athlete. No way God would let this happen to me. There's no way in my life he would ever let this happen. I went to the garage and I started trying to drill the basketball. Coordination, I couldn't do it. So I got up the next morning. I, you know, I asked my wife, I said, I need some help. I need to go to the doctor. And she said, well, I'm doing, you know, our daughter's here. Give me a few minutes. But I was in trouble. I needed help. So I drove myself downtown to the Lamb at West 11th. They took me in, but they wanted to train somebody. So they said, we want $54 before we let you get into the emergency room. Yeah. Took them another half hour, maybe 40 minutes to get me back there. But when they got me back there, they did a few things, tried to put an IV in because they couldn't put it in right. Had a rookie doing it. And then when she finally looked at me, she says, you're not driving. We're calling the ambulance you're going to the hospital. I was still bitter. I still didn't care about me. But then God finally let me go through this pity party and just said, you know what, Quentin? Let me let you go through it. I'm not gonna take your life. You should be dead, but there's more for you. So I began to crack open my word and I went to Psalms chapter 34, verse 19 and 20. And it says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him from them all. He keeps all of his bones, not one of them's broken. His bones were not broken. Others were broken because they didn't want them to pull themselves up because crucifixion was so painful and they were suffocating. And the Bible says that his bones weren't broken, but what I, I found out, I started in the Word of God, I started putting my name in there because I, I knew I wanted to um, I wanted to live at that time because life was more precious. And I was being selfish. And it bothered me that I was going to leave my family because I was so angry that I got hurt. And I thought about me more than I thought about anybody else because nobody else mattered. Because I seemed like I've been on my own since age 12 and I didn't know how to share with a family. And it bothered me that I could be so selfish still. And so I, I so, and it wasn't me. You know, a lot of people say, you know, it's because of me why I'm better. No, it's because of his grace and his mercy that I'm still here. I had nothing to do with it, but he told me that all. If you serve me, if you serve me, I can make all this go away. And I'll make it better in the long run. And even though I'm still going through, Sometimes it's, it's hell being a pastor, and people just don't get it. So I've been a pastor for um, two years. When I first started, I was so intimidated. But as soon as I, I started to wake up, and that's what I, I tell, I even tell the enemy, I said, you shouldn't let me wake up. And so when you're talking about that competitiveness, I'm a survivor. I want other people to be encouraged. I want other people to define the, the real Jesus. The thing I love about God is that sometimes things don't happen when we want them to happen. It has to take time to develop. And then his promises, because this is what he's shown me for me, his promises are sure. And he guards his word. And he holds it tight. He says, you don't let me. He goes, 
I don't let you down. You let me down. But I love you enough to see what I can see that you're going to be. Not everybody gets there. But there's those like David. I can see where you're going to go. And I can see what you're going to do. And you're going to screw up along the way. But I see your heart because it's close to me. A lot of us, even myself, God has given us promises. It's in our heart. And you know something's going to happen. And you just don't know what it is, but you feel good. But then when we don't see it come to pass, when we feel it should, God, I'm getting older. I can't see well. I'm not hearing well. God, I'm getting fatter. I'm not as athletic. I'm not doing things. Surely you forgot about me. But the Bible says that it was given to Caleb at age 85. And the Bible says that Caleb said, my strength at age 85, I can go to war and I can go out and I can come in. I'm just as strong as when the promise was given to me. And so the Lord is showing me this even for me. I said, God, I can't do it. I need the Trinity. God, I need you to lead me. Jesus, I need you to be right there coaching me. And Holy Spirit, I need you there implementing whatever I'm supposed to do. And help me to do the right thing. That's my passion for the gospel. Because um, I can't do it by myself. I just can't do it by myself. I'm, I'm just, I'm worthless by myself. So what do you when you see me cry, some people say, oh, you need to be stronger, you need to be tougher. You don't need to cry, you don't need to get up there and get on your knees before the people. Do that somewhere else so they don't see you like that. And I got to be transparent because I, I'm not perfect. I know God is close by, I know that his Holy Spirit is close by. And there are times that even when we're singing and doing praise and worship, I can hear in heavenly voices. I hear it in my ear. And some people may think I'm crazy, but God speaks to me. And some people in the past told me, God doesn't speak that much. You must be hearing something else. No, he speaks to me. His word speaks to me. And I have a passion to hear him. And he has an audible voice. But I hear him in my spirit and I hear him in my heart. And yes, he deals with me. Sometimes I'm bringing the message. And sometimes partway through or even from the beginning, he'll take me a different way. And I said, it's not me because you know what? If I was in my own cell, I'd stick to the notes and I would read them word for word. And I'd be boring as heck. When I'm in here, I know he's here. When I'm at home, if I'm listening closely, he's in there. And when my son is going through, even my son that sits right there that goes through, I know he's here. But what I, what I have to be careful of is that um, when it comes to my family, sometimes I let my guard down. And I want to be the, the dad, the natural, and the husband. And sometimes I don't hear as well when the Holy Spirit is talking to me, when I let that natural man start taking over. So when you're saying, when you look around and stuff, do you hear him? I hear him. He, he speaks to me. I don't care what nobody else says. Because I'll get angry sometimes. And I'll, I'll talk to God and say, I don't understand this. I just don't get it. I don't understand why you let me go through this part. And he knows that I'm still maturing. A lot of people look at the word perfect in the Bible and saying, well, I'm supposed to be perfect. No, you need to be more mature. You need to start growing up. Get off the milk, Quentin, and don't allow yourself to let that, let the sun go down on your, your anger because anger is in the bosom of fools and, and you get foolish. But as I'm growing, as long as his grace and mercy, and I really mean this, is with me, he'll talk to me. He'll, he'll challenge me. And I have to go back and say, I'm sorry even to my wife, because I, I feel sometimes that we're not communicating and she's not listening, I'm not listening, and so we're both 
competitive. We're both a little hard-headed. And we don't back off. We go forward, and we do it at the wrong time. So God's going to have to work on me. And this is where my faith, I want it to be. He heard about Goliath. Goliath was in the midst of the battle. The battle was arrayed on both sides. He's in the valley, and he was defying the army of the living God. And the Bible says that he did it day and night for 40 days. And he just wanted one to come to fight him. About nine feet, six inches, big guy. Had an armor bear. Why would you need an armor bear? Somebody before you. I got to have my armor bear fight you, Jeremy, before you get to me. I want you to be tough. Yeah, armor bearer. He had like secret service. I call him like a bodyguard that went before him. So he'd fight you. You'd probably get Tucker out and then Goliath go do his business. And so the Bible says that when David heard, said, who is this uncircumcised giant? And the thing I love about him, I'm getting to my faith. The thing I love about him, he went to Saul and said, Saul, you know what? When I was out in the, the field with the, the sheep and the lion came and I pursued him and I, I got him, I grabbed him by his beard and I was able to slay him. The bear came and I grabbed him and I was able to slay him. And what God has done for me, as I'm just paraphrasing on this, he said, what God has done for me and he was with me, I will certainly do the same thing to this giant. Saul said, okay, I'm gonna give it to you. I'm gonna give you that chance. Now Saul being what, six, four, six, five. And he said, take my armor, take my sword, take my gear, put it on, go do your business. And the Bible said he tried it on, but he couldn't prove it because he couldn't fight with it because that was not his strength. It was the stones. It was the sling. And he said, I cannot prove this, sir. I cannot utilize it. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to take what I know that works. And I'm getting to my faith. And he took his five stones and the Bible says that he hastened. The giant came at him. He said, you're going to send this little ruddy, ruddy kid? Him? That's all you got? But the Bible says that when Goliath finally found out that this young man was serious, he came to the battle towards him. And the Bible says that David hasted and he went towards his giants. So his faith was great because he already knew what God was going to do. And his carcass, Goliath's carcass was going to be fed to the birds of prey. And, and Goliath said, well, I'm going to do this to you. And he hasted to the giant. And the Bible said that when he got it, he began to swing it. And I could see him saying, one for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and the thing I, I love about giant faith when you're talking about that, God is still working on me with my faith. God knows that I'm going to stumble here and there. That's why I like Psalms 91. That if I should stumble accidentally, mis and it's a mistake. I did something I didn't intend for it to happen. His angels are there to pick me up. Okay. When he really, really got to me, I was like 30, 32. And I was so gun ho for the Lord. And then all these other people would want to tell me about all these different faiths. And I just, I said, oh, you sinner, yeah. You ain't going to heaven. You're going to go to hell. And it ain't going to work out because you ain't serving the way that I serve. And as I begin to grow, there are different avenues to the cross. And you may not speak it the same way. You may not teach it the same way. But if it leads to Jesus, because I believe from the word of God that it's once appointed a man to die and then the judgment. I, I don't believe that after we die, that's it. I believe that I'm either going to be with Christ and I'm going to be in heaven with the Trinity or I'm either going to be in hell. I, I, that's what I, I believe. But if you're teaching others, and it may not be from a Christian standpoint, and I don't like that because people use that too loosely. I want us to be Christ-like. And if you have those same qualities and you're going to get me to the same place, and you're going to teach me, you may not teach me from the Word of God, but you teach me, and it's effective, and it gets me in touch with my Maker in heaven, then I'm okay with it. So when I first became the, the pastor here, I wanted to be kind of careful a little bit, but still speak what God has put in my heart. 
and the passion was there, but it wasn't exuberant. Like I, I yes, yes. And I wanted to please people. And I'll tell you where that got me, zero. It got me nothing. It didn't work. When I grew the beard, that's what people thought. I used to didn't have this. I used to have a small one like yours. They said, now you're intimidating. Now you look like you're mean. And if you cut it off, you'll look better. I, I, I couldn't, it took me back to Samson and Delilah. Well, just tell me what your secrets are. And just start doing what we need to do, and you'll be okay. Nothing will happen. And then another lady said, um, cut it off. Looking like a Moses, so long. And I said, well, you haven't seen Moses yet, because it's going to get longer. <laughs> You're mine. And what God has you to do, focus. Hear what he says. Quit conforming to the things of the world, what people want you to be and how they want you to be. Because if you do that, we can get anybody to be the pastor. And the ministry right now in my life, he's going to bring me some folks that are going through. And I have to be real with my maker. I, I have to. Because if I'm not real with him and I don't have the, the vertical connection, then this horizontal connection does not work. And I'm going to lose focus. When I get into a funk, I don't know how to let it go sometimes. And then I pick it up personally when he says, cast all your cares upon me because he cares for you. And then he, he talks about, you know, Satan himself, the devil. You know, he goes round about and he, he's looking, he's seeking who he may devour. So he wants to isolate me and he wants to pick on me and he wants to wound me. And if he can get me out of the way, then... Sure enough, they feel like, well, your family will fall. And, and God keeps telling me, to keep, as he told me last night as I was ministering, focus, focus, focus. And then when he says that peace that surpasses all understanding for me, that peace that comes inside of me, I can still be busy, but I don't have to be turmoil inside. I, I don't have to be fighting. It. And I don't have to be warring all the time. But he's saying, you know what? I can help you do it better.